Mission complete, guys. Let's go home. When the light fades, the scenery around me has completely changed. This location is familiar. This is the TV world, in the open space where everyone gathered. Huh? Is this inside the TV? Th that's right. Where's everyone else? Where's Shokun? I look over and see Shokun collapse on the ground a little further away. Thank goodness. That was quite mean of Elizabeth. She only mentioned my companions, so I was worried about what would happen to Shokun. Huh. I see. Elizabeth said that she would transport my companions. That means she, that she considers Shokun to be one of my companions as well. I don't see Adachi-san anywhere, but this is Elizabeth, Elizabeth we're talking about. I'm sure she transported him, some, him to someplace else too. Anyway, I worry about how Shokun isn't moving from the ground, and I quickly rush to his side. Shokun! When I call to him, he slowly stands up, facing away from me. He looks around himself without a word, and then looks down at the ground and quietly mumbles. Shut up, Scrap. Enough yapping. I, I couldn't help it. Not when I knew you were safe. Hey, did you kill that thing? Huh? Did you destroy Hino Kagutsuchi? Can't you understand words? Oh, yeah. You're strong. Huh? God damn it, do I have to say everything to you twice, you piece of junk? Never mind, you stupid toaster. He's still yelling at me. But Shokun does seem a little different than he had been before the fight. His voice and his expression, too. Maybe it's just my imagination, though. He doesn't seem like he's going to get violent, either. For now, that is. Shokun, where are you going? <sighs> it's none of your business. If you don't shut the hell up, I'm gonna cut you. But everyone's waiting for you. I'm sure Mitsuru-san and her people are, too. <gasps> shut the hell up. I'm not gonna start listening to what anyone wants now. Go back to where you belong. Uh, Shokun! Hey, Scrap. Shokun makes it to leave this place, then stops to talk to me. It seems he's remembered something. I'm actually a little surprised that he's talking to me. Oh, y yes? Yes. <laughs> Seriously? Now you can't even speak properly. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> you, you don't have to laugh that much. <sighs> oh, damn it. You really are broken, aren't you? Uh. Hey, do you think even now he might be... Huh? Never mind. See you later, robot. You better have your damn oil changed or something. Huh? Oh! Before I can think of something else to say, Shokun's already getting far away. What should I do? This is inside the TV world, after all. But his posture is much more confident than when I first saw him. He has his own future waiting for him now. I'm sure there will be mountains of painful difficulties waiting for him. There's even the possibility that we might end up facing him again as an enemy. But even then, that's okay. Even though it was only for a short time, I sense a bond between myself and him. If I don't give up, and if I keep wishing for his success, a day may come where we, may, we, we, where we reach an understanding. But I don't get an oil change during a maintenance routine, though. Suddenly, several shining figures appear within the room here in the TV world. When the light around them dims, I recognize familiar faces. My companions who have finished fighting their own fierce battles gather one after another. Huh? What's going on? I thought the fog suddenly lifted, but, but where am I? Labrys, you're okay! Oh, I'm so relieved that I can't stand up. Labrasan, thank you. I believed in you. I knew that you could do it. I wish you could have seen us, Labichan. Shadow operative Junpei Yori totally nailed it. <laughs> Whoa! What a 
not a soft yet stinky landing spot. Oh, oh my, this is inside the TV. Wowee, Yuki-chan, Ken-Ken, Kurumaru's here too. Is everyone okay? Are we? This is the normal TV entrance. Oh, it would seem everything has been settled. Sister, I'm so glad you're okay. Still, I knew you would be able to overcome this. I'm going to have to try harder to keep up with you. You definitely showed us your resolve back there, Labrys. You did splendidly. We would have been in danger had you not been with us. <laughs> you haven't been with the Shadow Operatives for very long, but you've already become our ace in the hole. I'll continue counting on you, Labrys. Labrys, I sensed everything! It was really amazing! Labrys! I was so impressed that you beat such an immense enemy all by yourself! No, it was thanks to all of you. I only beat him down because you were with me. Thanks, guys. Another group of shining figures appear. This time, it's Yukun's group, appearing along with Fugasan. It seems they were fighting the shadows that were closing in on the tower when they, too, were suddenly enveloped by light and were taken to this place. Yeah, that was suspenseful. You did an amazing job. We're definitely throwing a celebration party. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. We have quite the group here together, after all. Labrys, thank you for all your hard work. Are you okay, Labrys? Are you hurt anywhere? I mean, you were really amazing! Thanks, Labrys. The town should return to normal now. It's all thanks to you. Yukun. Had I not come here, everyone in Inaba would have continued le leading peaceful lives. Internally, I was afraid to learn what he truly thought of me. That was when Kenkun told me that I should go to him myself and find out how he feels. He was right. Just seeing the kindness in Yukun's eyes right now makes me feel like there's no need to hear what he thinks about me in words. The relief of this painful battle coming to an end mixes with the joy of discovering new and true friends. My happiness proves to be contagious, and before, lo before long, we're all talking animatedly with one another. After some time, Mitsuru-san approaches me. Her expression seems rather meek, and when she speaks to me, she seems apologetic. Labrys, I'm sorry, but I need to hear your report. Where is Minazuki? Were you able to speak with him? Oh, yes, but only for a little while. But before you all came here, he... Oh. When I begin my report, Akihiko-san nudges me in the shoulder with his elbow. Huh? I descend in bewilderment, but Suru-san clears her throat. You know, Labrys, the Shadow Operatives are a formal organization. I am obligated to report about this case to the higher-ups. Right. That's why I was saying, before you all came here, Shokun- uh. Hey! Akihiko-san nudges me in the shoulder even harder this time. Huh? What's going on? Did I say something weird? <sighs> You're even more naive than I am. You really are like a child when it comes to these things. There are just some things you don't want to be honest about at times like this. That's why you just gotta dodge the question and- uh, Ow! Shupei, don't start teaching Labrys stuff like that. We don't want her becoming more like you. Ow, what was that for? You're scarier than the shadows. <laughs> I didn't ask properly. Shadow Operative Labrys, do you know where Minazuki went? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know where he went. Oh. Phew. Hmm? The moment I answer them, they all sound relieved. For some reason, even Akihiko-san and Misuru-san are smiling in a satisfied manner. Could it be they actually want me to say that I didn't know where he went? I see. Normally, we'd have to send someone to track him down. But if you don't know, then there's nothing to be done about it. I will report this case to our authorities, and the Shadow Operatives will take responsibility for it. All of us. Mitsuru-san! I get it now. If Shokun, who was the person behind such a serious case as this, were captured, he would be dealt with severely. And even if Shokun were to meet with Mitsuru-san and the others, right now, he'd surely get angry like he was a moment ago, and it wouldn't be much of a conversation. But... If we Shadow Operatives pursue him ourselves, we'll have tons of opportunities to get Shokun to open up to us. Mitsuru-san. Everyone. Thank you. Behind if you don't hurry up. 
The others, who are a bit further away, call out to us. It seems the time for us to part is drawing close once again. But, since we are connected by bonds, we'll be able to see each other anytime we want. We'll just be physically distanced for a short while. Uh, are we really getting out from here? I'm feeling really anxious about this. Oh? Are you scared, Junpei? That's pretty lame for a big boy like you. Don't mind me for going on ahead. Please excuse us. Everyone from Minima jumps through the exit TV, one after another, as if they were completely used to it. Mitsuru-san, Aigis, Akiko-san, and Puka-san, who have also experienced this once, go as well. Alright, Koromaru. We should go too. <sighs> well, I guess I'd better go for it. Here goes! Come on, Toothpaste! Hurry up! Come on, get going! First time! Put me down! No! Teddy grabs Junpei san and manhandles, well, bear handles him through the TV screen. God damn it. Junpei san's shout quickly grows distant. Teddy then beckons to me before passing into the TV as well. I place my hand over the TV screen in the now empty plaza. Below this place is a school that I built. Now that I have a place to belong, I doubt I'll ever come here again. Goodbye. It's time I went back with the others. May 6th. Early morning. After leaving Juness, we heard that Kikino-san had landed the helicopter in the schoolyard at Yasogami High, so we headed back to the school. It seems that after Kikino-san risked her life to drop us off at Juness, she was forced to land near the outskirts of town. There, she studied the data from Shuji Ikutsuki's files and repaired the damaged helicopter, then took off again and was even able to help the others. Talk about a tough person! This means that we Persona users weren't the only ones who were fighting. The other reason why we returned to Yasugami High was because we needed to check on the crime scene as members of the Shadow Operatives. We go up to the rooftop of the school, and look down on the school now that it has regained its original form. Ah, school. The memories places like this bring back. It's already been three years. <laughs> I know, right? Time goes by fast when you're living a fulfilling life. So you have a fulfilling life too, Junpei-san? Can you teach me how to play baseball? Oh, now you're talking. Team trains really damn hard. I won't go easy on you. Got it? That's what I was hoping for. I like sports after all. By the way, Yukari, are you planning on going back looking like that? Uh, would everyone please stop talking about my clothes? I mean, you of all people shouldn't be talking, Akihiko Senpai. That costume's really cool, though. Wow, feather pink. I'm standing next to a real hero. There we go. Just be true to yourself, kid. Looking up to superheroes is what's truly childlike. Still, you're amazing, Yukari-san. You're actually wearing the costume and acting at the same time. Normally, even female ranger characters get played by male actors during the scenes while they're in their costumes. Huh? Is that for real? No, all those times I... Where did you hear that? Ken Kun's a big fan of those kinds of shows. But... I guess he isn't all that childish anymore. I suppose it's because it's been three years. <laughs> it might be in poor taste to say this right after what happened here, but I'm still glad we were able to get together again like this. Yeah, like we were guided here by his fate or something. The great hero Junpei and his pal saved the world again. Right. You probably wouldn't have even made it here if fate hadn't guided you. Seriously, the way he ended up here is just ridiculous. Maybe we were guided here by fate. We made some new friends too, after all. Everyone looks to me. I have so many people willing to call me a friend. It's a little embarrassing, but I can't help but smile. Most of all, I'm happy that I met my sister. I was able to meet you, son, and the others as well. 
Thank you, sister. Ma'am, I'm thankful for everybody else. Without you, I'd have never woken up and stayed in that box forever. I'd just be a machine that hurts people. But you all accepted me for who I am and gave me a place to belong. That's right. I have to repay everyone for all that they've done for me. To Mitsura-san and her companions for giving me this place. To everyone who made me realize that I'm never alone. It's me. My lady, the preparations have been made. But are you sure about this? Yes, I'll be right there. Huh? Where are you going, Mitsura-san? Hey! Mitsuru-senpai, don't tell me you're going back to forest. Well, I'm sorry. There are many things that need to be taken care of. I knew it! I'll have you know that we all put aside our jobs and other affairs to come here. You're gonna spend some time with us, like it or not. I do feel bad about causing you all trouble, but I guess can't you persuade Yukari? No, I refuse that order. This is a situation with consequences that affect our team's morale. <laughs> Give it up, Mitsuru. Don't worry about figuring everything out right now. I'll make sure things with those public safety jerks get settled. What? There's some guys hassling you. Let me come with you. I'll tell them everything about how Mitsuru-san did her best to help. P please don't. Things will only get more complicated if you two get involved. Very well. I suppose I can forget about my duties for one day and enjoy some time off. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you look so happy, Yukari-chan. It's been a while since I've seen you smile so much. Huh? You think so? Do I really not smile normally? Well, you always seem so angry, Yukatan. That's because you're always making me angry! Hey! Time out, Yukatan! You, you could really hurt me with that thing! Our laughter echoes from the rooftop, where the bright morning sunshine shines down upon us. As a lively conversation continues, I quietly place my hand on my chest. What's here right now connects me to that place. It connects me to everyone. May this warmth I feel spread to everyone else, and to him as well.